Hello my trash pandas and welcome back to the shop. Want to make more money scrapping metal? Stop wasting so much time. Today's episode, I never scrap these nine items and I'll tell you why. Now, as we go through these, please keep in mind that this is an opinion piece and these will not all be accurate for you. So it's important to check with your scrapyard and see how much you'd get paid for these items. Otherwise, well, I don't want to mislead anyone, but these are all specifically items that I do not find are worthwhile keeping a special bin and saving up. Please also keep in mind that this is about trying to make as much money as possible scrapping. It's noble and responsible to try and keep as much out of the landfill as possible, but it's also noble and responsible to try and be productive with our time. On today's list, I've got a bunch of items that I find extremely skippable, and for the end, I have three collections of materials that people are always telling me I shouldn't be skipping. They're worth doing, they're worth collecting, they're worth processing, and we're going to find out once and for all whether that's true. So look forward to that. But to start our list, the first thing that I cannot be bothered with, let's start off with power supplies. Specifically, I'm talking about power supplies for desktop computers. I was always told these are these are good money. They're high copper content They're not They're really not the wires that are inside of them are not high quality copper wire. They're mostly just they're They're really crappy like tin or aluminum or I don't know. They're not good the the different rails and different components do not contain a lot of copper <laughs> They're just I throw them in the steel shred because forget it Honestly, the second item I do not believe is worth keeping a special bin for, zinc and aluminum alloy. I know, I've done a video on it before and sometimes you end up with a lot of it, but here's what I've found. When I fill a bin with that stuff and I bring it in, so the best I can possibly get is dirty aluminum price, and it just takes a while to fill up that bin. And when I do, I get less than $10 for a Rubbermaid sized Thing full of it. It's just not worth it. Yes, it's theoretically nice to just throw an extra 10 bucks into the back of the truck when heading to the scrapyard. You'll find that's the theme with all of these items, but the time and energy that it takes, I'm happier just having one less bin to have to think about. As a combination bin with a bunch of other dirty aluminum, great, but as its own thing, that one's not worth it. Now the third one on this list is also aluminum. Pie plates, lasagna trays, Takeout food containers, all of those thin aluminum foil containers. No. I tried. I collected quite a few of them for a little while there when I was out more actively trash picking. I filled up two of those garbage bins. I crushed them down. I stomped on them. I, I made them as small, as tight as possible. Again, less than $10. That was a lot of space and a lot of time, just, no, it wasn't worth 10 bucks. I, all the power to you if you want to try it, but uh, those just go into the recycling bin and I don't think about them anymore. Next, now we're getting into a few that might be a little controversial and it's definitely regional, but number four for me, laptops. I know, but hear me out. I I exist in a terrible e-waste economy. There's really not a whole lot of money to be made for the individual here. If you're a large processor, then yes. And people have mentioned, no, no, you got it wrong. There's, there's ways to do it, and I would love to know how, but I haven't found them. With hard drives, there's no money in those for me. With the motherboards, same as hard drives, really. I just don't have a good buyer for the boards. So that leaves me with the the copper from the cooler on the inside. Now that's good. I'll grant you that. And maybe a couple sticks of RAM. Because generally the processor on a laptop is integrated and... No. I've never gotten paid for laptops. In fact, I have a bit of a collection sitting there that I'm... I can't wait for something good to use them for. Um, but so far... Laptops don't make me any money. It's kind of taken up a bunch of space and I hope to find something to do with them soon. Now this leads nicely into number five on our list, small electronics. This probably will be pretty familiar to many of you, but things like a, a video game console or even like a, um, a stereo unit or a, a CD or cassette player or those sorts of things, 
there's just not good money in them. They're mostly plastic with a low-grade board. Maybe they have a power transformer or some of those little ferrite hoops with the, the coils around them. I'm not sure what those are called. They don't make me any money. They take a lot of time, make a lot of junk. The power cord is... I know I just went over this, but... So here's the thing. In my area, the e-waste landscape is different. There are tons of free drop-off electronics recycling locations. Any Best Buy will let you drop off any number of electronic devices for free, just leave them at the door and they'll recycle them. And that is generally the best thing to do with those sorts of things. Doesn't matter if it's a, a flat screen TV or a desktop computer. And I know that sounds crazy, but for me, there's just no money in them. I find a desktop computer. I generally pull out the, the RAM and the CPU and maybe any other sort of gold finger boards that are on there because I, I do collect those, although why, I'm not sure. And then take them to the free electronics drop-off. They're just not worth the time to process. And this is why this is such a personal list because I know a lot of you out there make pretty okay money from different circuit boards of different grades and good on you i uh i wish that were me but i don't so it's not worth the time to stack them up and the last one before we get into the examples on the table is lead i i know this is for a different reason though because i talk plenty about lead the reason why i wouldn't scrap lead is because the amount you get at the scrapyard is trash compared to what you can get selling it to someone who melts it down to make fishing weights. It's a limited resource, people need it, and they'll pay you a lot more than the scrapyard will. You just gotta put a little effort in, which I'm willing to do. Now let's head over to the table, I'll show you what I've got. And here they are, plug-ins, wall warts, and fluorescent lighting ballasts. But basically all of these have brass uh, forks here, even the silver ones. They're still gonna be brass, they're just nickel plated or something to make them look a little more attractive or maybe so they don't um, uh, corrode over time. A lot of people tell me you gotta take these things apart. I, I think part of why that's so common is because in uh, in the UK they all, many of them have screws on them. So many of them are quite easy to take apart. Um, but here in Canada and I assume the US as well, they're all molded. Like basically all of them are just these solid blocks of rubber, which makes it kind of challenging to, to pull these things out of. There's a couple of them that have screws, but for the most part, it's not how it works. Now we're gonna try not to hurt ourselves by softening these things up with a technique that I saw everyday solders use. Check her channel out, She's, uh, she has a lot of fun scrapping in the UK. And those can just simmer away. Well, with those ones on their way, the next ones in my mind are these. Ballasts from fluorescent light fixtures. These have to be the ones that say no PCB on them, or the scrapyard won't take them. There's nothing wrong with scrapping these. Tons of people collect them. I'm just always disappointed with how much I end up getting paid for them. I kind of suspect the number one insulated wire on them would be the best part, but we'll find out. Now with these all warmed up, I'll set a timer for 30 minutes and we'll extrapolate the hourly rate from there. I have to say I'm a bit surprised. These are really, really easy to do.
So after flying through them for a half an hour, we've got just under two pounds of brass, or 0.85 kilos. I managed to do almost the whole pot of them in half an hour, so I'll just quickly finish the rest off. Now the last one is these wall warts, or wall transformers. I'll only get heavy, dirty, or really low-grade motor if I bring them in the way they are. And I quickly learned that most of them don't actually have the transformer that I'm looking for. This Apple brand one was a bit of a surprise because it had actual sheets of copper inside. But overall, they did not take very long, and the weight's actually pretty good. Four and a half pounds plus four pounds, eight and a half pounds. So after cashing them all out, did anything change other than my clothes? Thubstore.com. Let's do them in order of appearance. So that was a total of six pounds of yellow brass from all of the plugs. At $2.07 a pound, that means we got $16.20 for just over half an hour worth of work. I've never been so disappointed to say that they are in fact worth it, but turns out they are. If you want to, yes, it's actually decent money as long as you soften them up like that but I will say it was horrible on the wrists I did not enjoy that I don't think I'll be saving them up for that reason I'm not as young as I once were and these wrists aren't uh, <laughs> they're worth more than than that now the ballast I had a total of 40 pounds but there were actually two different categories one was better than the other one I got 10 cents a pound the other I got 16 cents a pound for a total of five dollars and thirty-two cents. Yeah, the insulated number one wire that we pulled off of all of them was five dollars and twenty cents. I'm not gonna make a special effort for those. Bins that barely make any money annoy me. But if I find a whole bunch of them, then absolutely, I'll bring them in. And the final one, we have the Transformers at 25 cents a pound. We had 16 pounds because I had a few other ones. Those are four dollars. But that only took me 12 minutes. So, I may actually change my mind on those ones just because there are other lower grade motor stuff that can go in the same bin and they are super, super easy to separate at the point of acquisition. In any case, those are the nine items that I can't be bothered scrapping. Your situation might be different, but that's how I feel. Thanks as always for watching and please let me know in the comments down below which items, if any, you eventually said screw it to saving and scrapping. Subscribe for more fun scrapping metal and uh, helpful guides. Leave it better than you found it. Keep doing the thing.